The next paper that we are going to see uh, is authored uh, by the colleagues from Karlsruhe. Uh, Patrick Moll, the main author, uh, is right now in China, as I am informed. Um, it is also about uh, fiber, um, fiber-based uh, materials uh, and is entitled Method for the Investigation of Mold Filling in the Fiber Injection Molding Process Based on Image Processing. Uh, the authors are Patrick Moll, Axel Schäfer, Sven Kutandin and Professor Jürgen Fleischer from the Institute of Production Technology of the KIT Karlsruhe. Please. Dear ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all the authors, a very warm welcome to the presentation of our paper Method for the Investigation of Mold Filling in the Fiber Injection Molding Process Based on Image Processing. My name is Patrick Moll of, from WBK Institute of Production Science at KIT. As you probably are all aware of, fiber reinforced plastics offer high potential for weight reduction in parts manufacturing. In spite of the potential, we face the challenge that FIP production has high costs. These costs result from the high material costs for carbon fiber production and the textile semi-finished product. There are also big losses due to cutting waste during the manufacturing process. For the use in semi-structural components, we see potential in the use of non-woven composites instead of endless fiber FRP, especially when not using carbon fiber, but glass fiber or recycled carbon fibers. Another possibility for cost reduction is the direct manufacturing of 3D-shaped preforms with the fiber injection molding process, replacing the first three process steps in the, in the figure above. The, the fiber injection molding process starts with opening and carding the fibers to a homogeneous fiber blend. The blend consists of the structural fibers, glass or carbon fibers, and 5 to 20% of low melting thermoplastic binder fibers. The blend is then injected into an injection mold by means of an airstream. When the cavity is fully filled, the upper mold is replaced by a compression mold to press the fibers into the final geometry. Then hot air is blown through the fibers to melt the binder fiber and bond the structural fibers together. After cooling, the part can be removed. This fiber injection molding process allows the direct manufacturing of 3D near net shaped parts. As all the fibers are injected directly into the injection mold, we can achieve a very high material utilization rate of almost 100%. Within this process, it is also uh, possible to adjust the local density distribution, which can be done because of the geometry difference between the injection mode and the compression mode, as shown in the figure above. Therefore, we can say that fiber injection molding has a very big potential for the resource efficient manufacturing of 3D preforms. To manufacture preforms in the fiber injection molding process, we have to overcome some challenges. In order to get good infiltration results in the subsequent process step, the preforms need a good mass weight uniformity. This mass weight distribution is defined by the distribution of the fibers during the injection step. So for optimal of this injection step, we need a monitoring of the injection process. As of now, there is no real-time monitoring of the mold filling. What is done today um, during research is to interrupt the injection process, then open the mold and control the fiber distribution, and then repeat this uh, over and over again. For from other processes like injection molding or infiltration processes, the integration of various sensors measuring temperature, pressure, or the resistance are known to monitor mold filling. Unfortunately, none of them is applicable to the fiber injection molding process due to the process and material characteristics. So the objective of this investigation is the development of a method to determine the mold filling state and the distribution of the fibers within the injection mold. 
for this, we developed an approach based on image processing. We integrated a camera into an injection mold. The images of this camera are then sent to an image processing software on a computer, which uh, detects the fiber front and sends the results of the fiber front and the current mold filling state to a machine PLC, which uh, displays the current state on the machine's HMI for the operator. We now have a closer look on the modified injection mold. We can see here the injection mold on this side. We normally have the nozzle which blows in the fibers. And in our case, we replace the bottom and the top of this mold with plexiglass. So with the camera, which is installed here beneath uh, the cavity, we can look inside the cavity. And on the opposite side, we have um, some LED lighting to enhance contrast. These images are then sent to the image processing. The images are acquired as grayscale images with a resolution of 640 times 450 pixels. Then, during the pre-processing, the images are cropped to a square shape, uh, which corresponds to the surface of the mold, and then normalized using a histogram equalization to remove any deviations of the backlighting. The next step is the binarization which basically separates the darker areas, which correspond to areas with fibers, from brighter areas, which correspond to areas without fibers. Then at the end, we've got some segmentation. This segmentation is to detect the fiber front um, within the mold. Therefore, we use the find contours function. As we get different uh, contours, we also have some kind of uh, filtering to find the right uh, contour. Here in the image, we can see the green contour, which is the right one, and the red one, uh, which doesn't uh, correspond to the fiber front. For further explanation, please refer to the paper. We can see in the overview of the image processing that the binarization is the most crucial part of detecting areas um, with fibers. Therefore, we have got a closer look at this binarization. We have implemented three methods. The first method is an OTSU method, which is a classical uh, approach for binarization based on an uh, adaptive threshold. The second one is K-means algorithm, which is normally used for clustering tasks. The third one is a convolutional neural network, in this case, the so-called UNET, which is normally used for binarization of medical images. For this uh, convolutional neural network, we um, hand-labeled some images, and with this, we trained the neural uh, network. As um, the two later mentioned uh, methods uh, also um, give a uh, grayscale image as an output, we need uh, another simple thresholding to really separate the images into black and white images. At the end, we've got a morphological closing operation to close the small holes within the two uh, faces. I would now like to present the results. Um, for the evaluation of the binarization, we compared the images of the three methods with hand-labeled um, images. Therefore, we uh, took a video of an injection process. And from this video, we took uh, 100 images, hand-labeled them. And then uh, we compared uh, these hand-labeled images uh, to the results of our algorithms. And what we can see here in the figure is the number of misclassified pixels in percent. It is obvious that uh, the OTSO method performs very well with an average error of 1.4% and a maximum error of 5.25. On the other hand, the convolutional neural networks 
has an average error of 3.01 and a maximum error of 21.85. Especially here in the later um, stages of the mold filling, um, the convolutional neural network performs very badly. Let's also have a look at the achievable frame rate. There, the Otsu method performs also the best with uh, seven frames per second, whereas the other two methods um, have, a, has a, have a frame rate of 1.5 or 0.5 respectively. If we take a closer look uh, to some distinct um, stages of, of the mold filling, we see here uh, the image 61, which corresponds roughly uh, half the filling. Um, we see that the fiber front is detected um, yeah, well enough uh, by all of the methods. But now looking at uh, image 89, which corresponds to an almost uh, fully filled mold, we say that uh, the Otsu thresholding method and the K-means algorithm um, achieve a good result, but the convolutional neural network fails to detect this uh, fjord-like structure um, here inside um, uh, the mode filling. Therefore, we can summarize that the Otsu binarization method delivers the best results with regards to performance and reliability. I would now like to summarize our paper. We described a new method for the monitoring of mode filling um, in the fiber injection molding process. Using and validating different image processing methods, we could show that the system is suitable for monitoring of mold filling regarding performance and accuracy. The next step in our re research is to improve the uniformity of fiber injection molded preforms uh, with an adaptive control of the injection process based on the computed fiber uh, front. We are also working on a quality control measure based on the acquired images. I'd like to finish with the re references. If you've got any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments or address them in the later Q&A session. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Patrick Moll, for preparing that presentation and the uh, article. Um, we are now uh, getting Patrick Moll uh, live here in the question and answering. Uh, he's sitting in Shanghai right now, uh, an affiliate to the WKKIT in Karlsruhe, Germany. Hello, Herr Moll. Hello. Hello, Patrick Moll to Shanghai. Hmm. Hello, Franz. Nice to see you. Yeah, uh, good to have you here in the session. Thanks for sending the paper. Thanks for sending the presentation. Um, the process that you are describing and investigating is, let's say, a bit unusual. So can you explain a little bit more about that process, uh, that specific process that you are investigating? Yes, of course. Um, the process is called fiber injection molding. And basically, it's a process to uh, manufacture three-dimensional uh, non-wovens. Um, the origin of this process is mainly in the manufacturing of insulation parts, but our research focuses in the use of these non-wovens as preforms. So the main focus is on um, improving the uniformity of these uh, preforms. Um, in our views, the process has three main um, advantages. The first one is that we have a very high material utilization uh, rate because all the fibers uh, we have are blown directly into this mold. And so we can use 100% or almost 100% um, of these uh, fibers and we don't have any scrap. The second advantage is that we can use a huge variety of fibers. So we can use glass fibers, we can use carbon fibers, um, we even can use uh, recycled carbon uh, fibers. 
And the third advantage is that um, it's, uh, the process is capable of um, creating different density in different uh, areas of the part, which comes from the geometry difference of the injection upper mold and the compression upper mold. Can you comment a bit about the strength of the, uh, of the work pieces that are outcomes of this kind of process? Um, yeah, actually, the um, strength of these work pieces um, yeah, depends on, um, on the infiltration results. Um, and that's one of the key problems we have uh, with this process that these infiltration or that the infiltration varies um, uh, with the uniformity. Um, basically, we can say that um, uh, the results in tensile tests we performed are in the magnitude of SMC parts. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for that insight. Um, I was wondering about the measurement. Uh, as far as I have understood, uh, the, the method that you are applying is an in-process uh, measurement. Can you comment about the uh, in-process or post-process measurement and the potential you, ca you see further than the work that you have presented for, uh, for image processing? Yes, of course. Um, what we have done was, is uh, we integrated a camera inside the mold and we took these live images uh, from the mold to calculate the fiber front. So um, we see um, during the filling of the mold where exactly uh, the fibers are uh, placed and if we have um, non-uniformities um, during the injection process. And what we have reached up to now is the detection of this fiber front and um, an idea how much fibers we already have um, inside the mold because uh, the state of the art before this uh, work was that uh, um, uh, this was based on experience um, if uh, a mold is already filled um, or not. And right now um, with this uh, work we have an online uh, monitoring solution. Um, what we do now, or what we are currently working on, is that we want to use this information on the fiber front to uh, control the process and to control the movement of uh, the nozzle to get a uniform filling of the mold with the ultimate goal uh, to improve the uniformity of this non movements Okay. Well, what are the next steps of the beyond the image processing and the uh, uh, quality assurance that you do there. Uh, what is the next uh, steps that you're planning to do with that process? Um, we are also working on um, hybridization approaches with this process. So what we have already done is that we integrated metallic inserts um, into this process. Um, we also reinforced um, this uh, fiber injection molded non-wovens with endless uh, fibers in order to improve um, mm -hmm. the strength of the parts. And uh, currently we are planning on uh, doing a hybridization with a sheet metal. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks for sharing these details with us. Uh, thanks for doing the paper presentation. Thanks for being available from Shanghai, Patrick Moll. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, thank you as well. Thank you. So, this uh, was the paper a method for the investigation of mold filling in the fiber injection molding process based on image processing, authored by Patrick Moll, Axel Schäfer, Sven Kutandin, and Jürgen Fleischer from Karlsruhe.